All right, so we are gonna do the disc method, which again, that means all of your cross sections are gonna be circular. You're spinning around an axis. Um, and so again, we have dx problems and dy problems. If you have a horizontal axis of rotation, like the x-axis, the x-axis is horizontal like this, then it's gonna be a dx problem. So if it's like the x-axis, it's a dx problem. If you have a vertical axis of rotation, so vertical would be this way, that's like the y-axis that's gonna be a dy problem. So it kind of like makes sense. If you rotate around the x-axis or any other line that's horizontal like the x-axis, it's gonna be a dx problem. Y-axis or any other vertical line like the y-axis is gonna be a dy problem. But then they're all pi r squared. It's all pi r squared. Usually you put the pi out front. You can put it in the integral if you want, but typically that's where you see it. They are all pi r squared because they're all gonna be circles um, or disks. That's why it's called the disk method. All right, so we're just gonna uh, practice a bunch of these. Number one, find the volume of the solid of revolution obtained by revolving. We're all gonna say things like that because we're of revolution and revolving. A plane region R bounded by these graphs around the X axis. So it's gonna be a DX problem. Um, let's go ahead and graph these functions and see what it looks like. So first Y equals X squared. We're gonna have zero, zero. And then if I plug in one, we're gonna get one. I would not plug in two or three. You can't square root those nicely. So let's jump to four. If you plug in four, you're gonna get two. So this is your square root. Right. All right, the X axis and the line X equals four. So that's a vertical line at four. So here is the area that is enclosed by that. Now here's my suggestion. You can take or leave my suggestion. I'm not gonna give you bad advice because I want you to be successful. I would erase everything that is outside of that shape, like all the tail ends of all the graphs, just to keep them from cluttering up the problem. Because you really wanna look just at this. So I usually erase, you know, everything else that's around that. You can or not, it's totally up to you how you get through the problem. I just think it helps if you get rid of that because what you wanna do is show the, um, the revolution what you're revolving around. So we're gonna spin this around the X axis. So what I always tell everyone to do is draw what I call a ghost shape on the other side of the X axis. So it's just gonna be a mirror image down here. And then your cross sections are gonna be circles. I usually just draw one. For this one, I'll draw a few, like so you can see what's going on here. Are you like visualizing this with me? I want you to visualize this three-dimensional thing. This would be like, if you turned it this way, this would be like a, um, like a cereal bowl that you couldn't put any cereal in because it's like solid the whole way through. Or it's like a, um, like a bullet, if you imagine it being like really, really small, or it's like a top, something that you could spin on its point. I don't know, are you guys imagining the three-dimensional object <laughs> that's being created? I'm trying to get you to see it. I know, it's, it's so hard over the computer. It's like a dreidel, there you go. You could spin it on its point there. I just want you to imagine what it looks like, okay? Um, so it's gonna be a DX problem. We spun this around the X axis. Um, and I always set up the problem. It's gonna be pi r squared dx. I would always do that. This is like what I call the skeleton of the problem. Set it up, pi r squared dx. If you just set it up every time and then go back and fill it in, you won't forget stuff. Like you won't forget the pi or the squared or anything. It's pi r squared dx. All right, so looking at our x axis, our boundaries are gonna be from zero to four. And then your radius is this amount. So it is upper graph minus lower graph. The upper graph is that square root of X. The lower graph is the X axis, which is the zero. So you can kind of ignore that. So it is just gonna be square root of X. Again, this is your radius here. So the nice thing about that is the square root and the squared cancel out. So it's just gonna be X. And then antiderivative is one half x squared, such that zero to four, and I'm just gonna plug in the four because if you subtract nothing, it's just gonna be nothing. So if you plug in four, four squared is 16, half of that is eight and then times pi, so eight pi. And then it would be units cubed, but they just usually don't pull. 
All right, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by, and then they're gonna give us a bunch of curves here. All right, so the first one, y equals x cubed. So we're gonna start at the origin. We'll have one, one, negative one, negative one, and then two would be up there at eight, that's gonna be off the graph, but this is gonna wait. It'll do something like this. All right, and then we've got the y-axis, so right here, and the line y equals three, so horizontal line at three. So this is the area enclosed by all of those. And so again, my suggestion is erase everything that's outside of that, all these little tail ends of the graphs, because you're gonna wanna draw a ghost shape in there so you can kind of imagine it Thinning. And it just helps if your graph isn't all cluttered up. If you're like, but Miss Cole, I like to draw with pen. Well, get an erasable pen or just draw with pencil for, for like a few minutes, right? I, I think it helps. All right, now we're going to spin this one about the y axis. Okay, so hold on. That means this is going to be a dy problem. And so you immediately want to stop what you're doing and go back and rearrange the equation um, to make this be x equals. So to get rid of the cube, we're going to root. So this is the equation we're going to use. So spinning this around the y-axis, I'm going to draw a ghost shape across the y-axis. So it's like a um, mirror image. It looks like a little Hershey kiss here. So here's our, our thing spinning. So we have like a little solid Hershey kiss. It's upside down. Um, and then we're ready to set up the integral. So it's going to be pi r squared dy again, because we rotated around the y axis. I'm going to use y values for the boundaries. So it'll be uh, looking at your y axis, it'll be zero to three. And then the radius is this amount. So it is going to be right graph minus left graph. The left graph is the axis, so that's just zero. So it's just going to be this curve, which is this cube root of y. Now we can do this by hand. I'm just gonna rewrite it a little bit to make it look a little bit more pleasant here. Uh, if we have cube root of y squared, that is gonna be y to the power two thirds. And you're like, how did that make that more pleasant? Well, we don't like fractions. You're gonna be okay. It's just, it's just two thirds, it's gonna be fine. All right, so the, the cube root means that the denominator is three and it's squared. So y to the two thirds. So antiderivative, you're going to add one to the power that would make it five thirds and then divide by that. So three fifths goes out from, from zero to three. And then all you really have to do is plug in three. It would be minus nothing if you do upper boundary minus lower boundary. So this will be pi times three fifths. And then I'm gonna write this back as the root just to be real thorough here. You could leave it as three to the power five thirds. That would be a cube root of three to the fifth. All right, we all hanging in there? Is this going okay? We're all right? Okay. I kind of like these ones. It's nice because they're all circles. You don't have to worry about different shapes. They're just all. All right, three, um, A and B, so we're gonna use the same graph for both of these. Um, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the first quadrant region, that's always nice when you're stuck in the first quadrant, bounded by these graphs, All right, This is a reflected parabola that moved up four. So we're gonna go up four, put a point. If we plug in one, we would get three. And if we plug in two, we would get zero. Now it's said to stay in the first quadrant. So this is, the shape that we're looking at. And I'm gonna go ahead and just draw that again for part B. We're gonna start out with the same, you know, root problem here. So I'm just gonna sketch it again real quick. All right, so for letter A, it says we're gonna spin that around the X axis. So it's gonna be a DX problem. I'm going to draw my ghost shape on the other side of the x-axis. So it's going to spin like this. 
So that would be like a, um, like a pitcher's mound, if you turn it this way, or like a paperweight, or I don't know, can anyone come, come up with something else that that kind of looks like? It's, it's gonna be circular, and then it's like a dome sort of, but solid the whole way through. I don't know, I hope we're, we're visualizing that, kind of like a, it's like a hill, yeah, but like a perfectly round hill that comes up, or like a pillow-ish. Yeah, cool, I like that. Okay, good, you guys are with me, you're like, you're trying. It's hard sometimes to come up with stuff. You know, we gotta be creative. All right, so this is gonna be pi r squared dx. And we're gonna use our x-axis. Um, it's gonna be a dx problem. So we're gonna integrate from zero to two. And the radius is from here to here. So upper graph minus lower graph. The upper graph is this parabola. So four minus x squared. Now again, we're gonna to have to multiply that out. The four minus X squared, if you wanna see that written twice, it would look like this. You can just write it off to the side. We're gonna to have to distribute everything to each other. So four times four would be 16. The outsides are minus four X squared. The insides are minus four X squared. So that's minus eight X squared. And then this would be plus x to the fourth. So you got to get through the algebra and then the calculus, antiderivative, and then upper boundary minus lower boundary. So this would be 16x minus 8 thirds x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth from 0 to 2. I'm just going to plug in the 2 because, again, minus 0, that would be nothing. Um, and this one, I'm, I think we would probably just leave this alone. Two times 16 would be 32. Two cubed is eight times eight would be 64. So that would be 64 thirds. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch this. We'll leave this alone. Two to the fifth will be 32. So that'll be plus 32 fifths. If you had to get a common denominator, it would be 15th. You've got a three and a five there. Um, I would say just leave that alone. That was a perfectly good answer for free response. All right, now letter B, we're going to rotate around the Y axis. Immediately, you want to stop what you're doing and come over here and rearrange this equation. We need to make it be X equals instead of Y equals. As soon as you realize it's a DY problem, stop what you're doing and rearrange. All right, so we're going to subtract over the 4. We'll have, I'm just going to do this off to the side here. Y minus 4 equals negative X squared. Subtract that over. Um, I'm going to divide everything by a negative. So this will be negative y plus 4 equals x squared. And then we're going to square root. So square root negative y plus 4. Now, you do get plus and minus for a square root when you square root. But we have the part that's in the first quadrant. So it's the positive square root. If we had the part that was over here instead, then we would use the negative square root. Um, but conveniently, we're in the first quadrant, so positive square root. All right, so this is going to be pi r squared dy. Again, set that up. If you set it up, you won't forget the pi or the squared. So pi r squared dy, we're using our y values. So look at your y axis. It's going to be from 0 to 4. And then this, oh, I didn't draw the ghost shape. Sorry, ghost shape over here on the other side of the Y axis is gonna look like this. So another um, like cereal bowl that you can't put any cereal in because it's solid the whole way through or like a top or a dreidel or something. So here's your gradient. It's gonna be right graph minus left graph. And the right graph is this square root of negative Y plus four. So the square root and the squared cancel. So it's just going to be negative y plus 4 dy. We're going to do the antiderivative and then upper boundary minus lower boundary. So this antiderivative will be uh, negative 1 half y squared plus 4y. And again, we're just going to need to plug in 4 because the lower boundary is 0. So if we plug in 4, 4 squared is 16. Negative half of that would be negative eight. Four times four will be 16. So that is gonna be eight pi, which, hey guys, 
is the same answer we got in this problem right here. It's the exact same three-dimensional object just turned on its side. We did one as a dx problem and one as a dy problem, but that's why we got the same answers because it's the same object. It has the same volume. All right, number four, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by x equals y squared. Ooh, big red flag there. This is probably a dy problem. All right, x equals y squared and x equals four about the line x equals four. So we're not going around the x or y axis. Now it's moved somewhere else. We'll get to that. Let's go ahead and draw these first. x equals y squared. That's a regular old parabola. It's just going to be sideways. So zero, zero, we'll have one, one, and the symmetric point. And then four, two, and the symmetric point. It's a regular old parabola that's just been flipped on its side. And I know it's not a function, but remember, we don't care if these ones are functions. We're just finding the area that's enclosed, or finding, well, in this case, the volume, because we're going to spin it. But we don't mind that it's not a function. All right, and then x equals 4 is this vertical line. And so this is the shape that we have. And so I'm going to erase all the tails of the graphs here. All right, so we are going to revolve that or spin it about the line x equals 4. So I'm going to dot in x equals 4. That's right here. And we're going to spin this around that line. So you're going to end up with your ghost shape over here. And these are your disks. You're going to have all these disks that are going this way. So this one is like an egg that's solid the whole way through. So Easter is coming. It's like a chocolate egg that's just solid the whole way through. And it is going to be a dy problem. First big clue was this was backwards. And also, it's like we're revolving around the y-axis. We just scooted the y-axis over a little bit. So it's like I just took the y-axis and moved it over here. So it is going to be a dy problem. So this will be pi r squared dy. So we're going to look at our y-axis for our boundaries. We're going to integrate from here to here. So that is going to be from negative 2 to positive 2. And then here is the radius. A little trickier this time because we moved the axis of rotation. When we do right graph minus left graph, neither of them is 0 this time. For all the other examples, one of them was the axis. So we sort of ignored it because it was just 0. Um, we moved the axis of rotation. So right graph minus left graph. Well, the right graph is 4, and then minus this y squared. So right graph minus left graph, it's going to be 4 minus y squared. So we are going to have to you know, do the algebra of multiplying that out. We've got 4 minus y squared times itself. So that is going to give us 16 minus 8y squared, the outsides and the insides, and then plus y to the fourth. Oh, that's actually the same one that we just did earlier, except with x's. So antiderivative, running out of space here, antiderivative, 16y uh, minus 8 thirds y cubed plus 1 fifth y to the fifth. And we're going to have to actually do upper boundary minus lower boundary. The lower boundary is not zero this time. And I'm going to stop once I plug them in. We'll just leave it alone. You could sift through it if you wanted to. Oh, both of those are going to need a pi out front of them. Hold on. All right, so if we plug in positive 2, we're going to do upper boundary minus lower boundary. If we plug in positive 2, that's going to be 32 minus uh, 64 thirds plus 32 fifths. And then if we plug in negative two, um, it is going to be negative 32 plus 64 thirds minus 32 fifths. And so if you really wanted to, you know, a lot of stuff would combine together and cancel out there. Um, I'm not trying to torture you, though. We'll just go ahead and stop. Because for free response, that's a perfectly fine answer. All right, and then last one. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by. All right, we've got negative x squared. That's your regular old parabola, except upside down. So 
zero, zero, one, negative one, and then two, negative four. All right, and then also y equals negative one. So a flat line here at negative one. And also, oh, I guess I don't really need to draw that that far, huh? So our shape is this area right here. And so I'm gonna erase all the tails outside of that. I went a little over above and beyond with that one, whoops. Oh, well, that's fine, the eraser works. All right, so we've got that tiny little shape. We're gonna spin it around the line y equals negative one. So we're gonna dot in y equals negative one, and we're gonna spin that around. So here's our little shape. Now, is it dx or dy? Well, it's like we just took the x axis and scooted it down a little bit. So it's gonna be a dx problem. Again, it's like the x axis, but we just moved it down. So dx problem. Um, Putting in our, our circle, I know this one's kind of hard to see because it was so small. And then we're ready to set up our integral. So pi r squared dx, we're gonna use x values for our boundaries. So that's gonna be from here to here. So negative one to one. And our radius is gonna be upper graph minus lower graph. Let me zoom in like real close on that. I know that's really hard to see. So our radius is from here to here. It's gonna be upper graph minus lower graph. So the upper graph is the parabola and the lower graph is the y equals negative one. So we do upper graph minus lower graph. This is our upper graph, negative x squared minus the lower graph, which is negative one. So those negatives are gonna cancel and it'll be negative x squared plus one. All right, so again, we're gonna have to multiply this out. This is negative x squared plus one times itself. So when we distribute that all to each other, that's gonna be a positive x to the fourth. We'll have minus one x squared and minus one x squared. So that's minus two x squared. And then one times one is one. Um, just don't be frightened of the algebra. I have to get through that. All right, so antiderivative. This will be one fifth x to the fifth minus two thirds x cubed plus x. And we're going to go from negative one to one. So upper boundary minus lower boundary. Oh gosh, I'm running into the graph here. I'm really sorry. I wrote too big over here and then I ran out of space. I'm sorry. Oh, and they both need pi. Let's put the pi in there. That's important. All right, so plugging in the positive one, that would give us one fifth minus two thirds plus one. And then if you plug in the negative one, you're gonna get negative a fifth plus two thirds minus one. And I apologize if I ran the graph. I'll try to recopy that a little nicer for when I take the picture and post the notes. 